What's going on right now in the United States is absolute insanity. Not only are banks denying us from withdrawing money, but they're actually closing our accounts and limiting our credit limit. This is something that we are seeing all over the United States. I've seen so many different reports. I've read a lot of different articles. I've seen some interviews. Mainstream media has been getting on this where banks are now trying to, what they say, minimize risk, but it's actually hurting the banks and it's hurting the consumer. I wanna address what's going on here and what we have seen just recently. So make sure you stick around and watch this entire video and I'll explain exactly what is going on. But all I ask is one thing, takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates and now let's begin. Okay, so first I wanna address a video that I did just a few days ago. That video, is, uh, I titled it, Banks Refusing All Cash Withdrawals and Closing Accounts. That video had over 1,000 comments on it. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because we continue to see more and more people are seeing that their banks are either shutting down, they're, there's a withdrawal window where if you wanna go into the bank and withdraw cash, you have to do it between this time and this time. And many people don't know that. The tellers do not publicize the times that they can give out cash, which is crazy. But I wanna address some other problems. What we are now facing is a huge issue because you go into certain restaurants, you go into some sporting events, uh, concerts, they don't accept cash. But at the same time now banks are starting to unbank individuals. They're trying to uh, limit their risk and by limiting their risk, they're simply denying you the opportunity or the ability to pay for things because now you don't have a credit card or you may not have a debit card because they are closing your account. Now, I wanna read a couple comments. So I highlighted a couple comments here on, on, uh, on my channel. Here's one right here. This is from Gretchen Look um, 628 it says going cashless, they will have more control over you and tell you what you can spend your money on. If they don't like something, they can take your money. People need to wake up and go against CVDC. This is not in your best interest. Now, I want to touch on something there because she says if they don't like if they don't like something, they can take your money. This is exactly what happened to a friend of mine. And I was talking to him just the other day, and here's what he said. Hey, he said he was purchasing cryptocurrencies from a site, um, from a platform, it's called Coinbase. Uh, it's one that you know I've recommended in the past, but Coinbase, he would do this on a daily basis. He would buy certain cryptocurrencies. And the, here's the reason why. He wanted to transfer money every single day into Coinbase. He didn't wanna have let's say 10, 20,000, $50,000 in the account and he'd just pull from it and buy certain crypto. So he would put more money in every single day. Well, here's the problem. The bank said that is risky. They didn't like his spending behavior, so they shut his account down. Here's the crazy part. He got his account shut down, okay? The bank account, not the Coinbase account. Here's the problem. He couldn't take the money from Coinbase and transfer it into his bank account because that account got shut down. So then he had to go to Coinbase, go through all the process again, which took him, I think, like a week or two weeks, where they'd send a couple small deposits. He'd confirm, yes, that's his bank. It would connect, and then he'd withdraw the money. Again, huge nightmare, huge issue, right? Especially if you need that money. Here's another thing. Banks all over the U.S. are shutting people down. They're closing different credit cards. If you are late multiple times on a credit card, they will simply shut you down. They say, no, nope, you're done. We, we're not gonna lend to you anymore, okay? And that is it. That turns into a problem. Now, here's the other one. If banks are getting rid of your credit cards and your debit cards, and now all you have is cash, well, guess what? Sometimes cash isn't king because certain businesses don't accept cash. 
So you cannot go in and buy anything. Let's say you need something desperately. It's an emergency, all you have is cash, and you tell the business, hey, this is all I got, I don't have a card. You know, they, my bank uh, pretty much locked me out of my account. They, you know, suspended my, my activity. I can't do anything, right? My card doesn't work. All I have is cash. The business can be like, sorry, you can try to give that to somebody else and they can pay with a card, but there's nothing we can do. I've seen that happen multiple times. I've even gone to gas stations. Okay, and, and here's the interesting thing, but gas stations, you go late at night, um, especially here in Washington State, there's, there's times where there's not a person at the gas station. They're closed. And so all you have is a card. That makes sense. But there's been a couple times where I've had to, uh, I've taken like $20 or even $10 from a person and I give them 10 to $20 in gas because that's all they had was cash. They don't have a card. Because again, millions of Americans are unbanked. Now, here's another thing. This is what most people don't realize is that a bank can shut your account down for multiple reasons. And this is part of the reason why more and more banks are closing customer accounts because of these reasons right here. Number one, they say is suspicious activity or fraud or even a suspicion of money laundering. That's a huge one. Too many overdrafts. If you are being charged, let's say it's $25 an overdraft fee or 15 or whatever it may be, you're being charged an overdraft fee. So not only are you, uh, you gotta pay the overdraft, let's say it's $100 that you spent, but yet you only had you know, 50 bucks in the account, that means now you have an overdraft of 50 plus tack on the extra $25, that's a $75 negative balance that you have. You have to pay that. Well, if it continues to be negative for quite some time, or you are consistently getting these overdrafts, Banks will pretty much shut you down and say, nope, we do not want you at our bank. Here's your $5 that you have in our bank. You can go somewhere else. We're seeing it over and over. Here's another one, little to no activity. I've actually had one of my bank accounts shut down because of this. I have very little activity on my account. One of the things that this account would do is I would put money in that account and I'd pay, off, I'd pay these uh, other accounts, like different balances or whatever, different cards. And so every three months, four months, something like that, I put in like 20 to $30,000 in this account. And then that account for the next two to three months would go and pay off these little things. Well, they said there was not enough activity. I wasn't putting enough, I didn't have enough uh, you know, deposits in the account and I had too many withdrawals. So guess what? They said, you're not our ideal customer. We do not want your business. And they said, you know, we were not gonna accept your payment. So when I went in the next time and tried to make a deposit, they said, sorry, uh, yeah, gotta go talk to the manager, whatever, and I don't bank there anymore. Simple as that. Here's another one. They say, um, too many withdrawals, okay? Just too many withdrawals, too many like micro withdrawals. It's something that they don't want. They do not wanna pay 3% or whatever on all these little micro withdrawals. So they said, you're done. That's it. Here's another one. And I actually had this happen to me as well, where a bank questioned my business choices. I was, and this, this happened years ago, okay? So years ago, I was using a, a, pro, a payment processor called Stripe. And I'd use that for, you know, different courses and uh, things like that. Anyway, so that's what I was using. And the bank that the payments would go to they said it was a risky business behavior. So they put my account on, a, my account was, wasn't was suspended. It was pretty much on a probationary period where they were gonna look at my account over the next three months and see, am I, am I their ideal customer? At the end of three months, they said, I'm still on probation for another three months. After those six months went by, they said, you have to stop accepting payments from Stripe. If not, we are going to block all uh, deposits into your bank account. I thought, nah, there's no way they do that. Guess what, they did. All my payments from Stripe stopped. And that was it. I was like, yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be banking here. And so I switched to another bank. 
This is also one of the reasons why I do not have just one bank. I have several banks, some large banks, some regional banks, some credit unions, right? It's very important. I have some just online banks. It's very important in my opinion to stay diversified, especially in 2024 where we don't know what's going to happen. All we know right now is there's an inflation crisis, there's a banking crisis, there's a potential war in the Middle East, and who knows what's going to happen. So in my opinion, the best thing you can do is to stay diversified when it comes to your banking situation. But let me know down in the comment section below, have any of these things happened to you? Have you got your bank account shut down? Have you got your credit limit decreased? Have you been told, I don't want you shopping at this location. I don't want you buying things from this person. You cannot accept a deposit or a payment from this payment processor. Let me know down in the comment section below because this is something that I continue to hear about all over. But that's what we got for you guys today. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.